How you doing, Relevant Church? It's, it's always been good to be in this house. I love this church. You know, this is my church. This is my first love in the L.A. Riverside area. Amen. And don't worry, I'm no second love. This is my love. I love this church. Are you ready for God's word this morning? Yeah. I'm so excited about what God is about to do. The Bible said in the book of First Corinthians, chapter number one, I believe, it said, Eyes have not seen, ears not heard, neither has it come into the heart of any man. Those things that which God has prepared for them that love him. He said, but he has revealed them to us by the Spirit. For the Spirit such at all things, yea, the, the things of God. So, in other words, ladies and gentlemen, we can move by the Spirit. You can download by the Spirit. The Bible said in the book of Revelation, chapter 2, Revelation, chapter 5, Revelation, chapter 7, it said continually over there to Revelation, chapter 20, it said, He that has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. In other words, the Spirit also speaks. The Spirit reveal the Spirit speaks. And one thing that the Spirit does is that the Spirit does not speak human sense. The Spirit speaks spirit. Are you still with me or you've gone home? The Spirit what? Speaks spirit. That is why the Bible says, deep call to the deep. The Spirit speaks spirit. That's why after Peter, after all night, Jesus showed up. He said, do you have any fish, son? He said, no, I don't. He said, launch your net into the deep. That is not normal. That is spirit toxic, talking. You're talking to a professional fisherman. Somebody that knows what it does very well in the fishing industry. And if there's any best time for you to catch fishes, is at night. But now, this is the morning. And Jesus said, drop your net into the deep. Because this is a spiritual dimension. And Jesus, Peter said, okay. And he dropped his net. And all the fishes begins to gather into Peter's net. Because when the spirit talks, everything's change. Yeah. <laughs> Relevant church, are you still with me? When the spirit talks, everything changes. Do you have wine in your wedding? Oh, the wine is finished. And the spirit said, let them put water in the pot. Jesus was talking. And he said, take out of that pot water, give it to the MC. And the moment the MC tasted it, he said, where do you got this from? This is better than the Valley wine from San Francisco, wherever. <laughs> Why? Because the spirit, when the spirit talks, everything aligns. I'm going somewhere, church. When God is about to change a nation, God will send a prophet. When God is about to change a community, God will send a prophet. When God is about to change your family, a prophet will show up to what? To speak the mind of God. Relevant church, I'm not here by myself. I'm here on a divine assignment. And the prophetic grace of God is upon me right now to tell you what the celestials is saying to the terrestrials. Are you ready? Open your Bible to 2 Kings. Let's get there. 2 Kings chapter 
number seven, please. I think we can read from the New King James Version this time around. It seems that this church is more familiar with that. <laughs> I am from the old school. Thou shalt not steal. <laughs> Second King chapter number seven. How are we there? Please go to the New King James Version. What did you say, sir? Oh, that's where they will be. Okay. Are you there? Please stand up on your feet as we read the word of God together. One, two, go. Then. Verse 2. Verse 3. of God we thank you because we know you are here already thank you for the presence of the move of the spirit in this house already send down the anointing that breaks yours send down the anointing that removes bodies let somebody be blessed let somebody be impacted by the power of the spoken word do that which only you can do heal the sick raise the dead let the blind see let the lame walk do the supernatural in our midst so that your people will know that they have been with the God of the church this morning. In Jesus' name we pray and let the relevant church shout amen like thunder. Amen. Oh, come on, shout that amen like thunder again. Amen. Have your seat if you can. <laughs> Second King chapter number 7 verse 1. Then Elisha said, yet the word of the Lord Thus said the Lord tomorrow about this time. There is something about God's time and there is something about human timing. Man of God. God's time is different from your time. Human's time is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Man's time is 2020, 2023, 2024. Man's timing. One o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock, five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock. Man's timing. But God's time is a day like a thousand years and a thousand year like a day are you still with me relevant church God's time is different from your time my time is different from your time but there's something about God's time when God's time come it has come let me say that again when God's time come it has come. They came to Jesus. Nazareth is there. They thought he was going to run. No, he was sick. He said, okay, wait for him. Then the man died. Wait, first day, second day, third day, fourth day. And said, let's go. Let's go and wake up Nazareth. That does not look normal. In the kingdom, things does not look normal. You are not in the family of the normal people. In this family, we are washed by the blood. That is not normal. I'm sorry. I'm not 
Pastor Jonathan Benima. I am from Nigeria. My name is Bolo Paul. So, 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 I will tell you the way it is. In this family, we are washed by the blood of Yeshua. In this family, we are begotten by the spirit, not of the physical. Look at your name and say, you are not in a normal family. In this family, I forgive you 700 times 70. Okay. I can offend him and tell him, I'm sorry. And offend him again. I said, I'm sorry. I can offend him again. I said, abnormal family. In this family, we love the people that are not lovable. Can I say it again? In this family, we love people that are not lovable. Normally, I won't love you, but because of the blood of Jesus, I just got to love you with your nasty self, Pastor Jonathan. This is not a normal family. If you are trying to look for a normal family, I'm sorry, you are in the wrong address because this is the family of the sons of God, the one that died and rose up again, the one that said, Let there be, and it was. So, so in this kingdom, the timing is different. Things are not normal. So, when the supernatural God showed up, it does supernatural things. So, can I speak to you this morning? When the supernatural God showed up, it does the supernatural things. So, God showed up to a man called Elijah. And he said, by this time tomorrow. Before that time, ladies and gentlemen, there is dryness in the city. Things are not working. There is no money in their pocket. There is no food on their table. There are no clothes on their children's body. But when the abnormal God showed up, he does the supernatural things. And whenever God wants to do something, man of God, the first thing that God will do is that God will announce what he's about to do. So God said to Elisha, by this time tomorrow, look at your neighbor said, by this time tomorrow. Oh, come on, tell somebody by this time tomorrow. I know you have been waiting for January. Things never showed up. You have been waiting for February. Things never showed up. March, April, May, June, July. And we are now in August. And you are telling yourself, the year is about to run over. Am I going to still be like this? Is my marriage still going to be like this? Is my ministry still going to be like this? Is my home still going to be like this? Is my businesses still going to be like this? Are my children still going to be like this? But thus said the Lord, it is not yet over. Oh my God, that devil is a liar. God is going to do the supernatural in your life, in your businesses, in your career, in your home, in your health. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. Things are about to shift supernaturally on your behalf. If you believe that, shout yes. Yeah, Elisha showed up. He said, by this time tomorrow, uh, you're going to be a millionaire. Yeah. She didn't get it. She didn't get it. By this time tomorrow, God is going to bless you with a blessing that you don't naturally deserve. Uh, uh, Elisha showed up. He said, Thus said the Lord, you thought.
thought it is over, Pastor Jonathan. But God said, the Lord, by this time tomorrow, it's not yet over. God has not given up on you. It's going to show up for you. It's going to step into the situation and knock all the doors down. Doors shall be open. Bank accounts shall move again. There shall be an abundance of rain in this house. Look at your neighbor and say, it's not yet over. I'm here to tell somebody, don't give up. It's not yet over. You think you are too old. It's not yet over. Ah, God showed up to Abraham. He said, I will yet bless you with your own child. Your call is named Isaac. Before December 31st, there is somebody under the sound of my voice. You're going to laugh last. <laughs> ah, do you hear what I just said? You're going to laugh last. You're going to see what the Lord has done for you. And you're going to step your feet. You're going to dance. You're going to say, yes. I remember that short guy that came all the way from Dallas. He he said, God has not given up on me. Pastor Jonathan, can you see? Let me share my testimony with you. I remember, I've given up. But when the man of God showed up, and he said, by this time tomorrow, I believe it with my heart. And God began to move things. I'm here to let you know. Relevant church, get ready. Because heaven is moving things on your behalf. The angels of God, they are moving things on your behalf. It's not yet over. There was a beautiful gate, but in that beautiful gate, there was an ugly situation. The Bible said, there is a man that sat at the beautiful gate. He was lame. This man cannot move. He can't help himself. Everybody has given up on him. But there is just a time of supernatural visitation. That man thought it was just another Sunday, but it wasn't another Sunday. Peter and John, they were going to church, and they met this man at the pitiful gate with a holy situation. He's been there all these years. Everybody knows him with his situation. Do you know sometimes people talk like you and address you based on your situation? You don't know the Pastor Paul I'm talking about, the one that comes with Pastor Jonathan, the one that always wears the African clothes, the one... That, you, you, you don't know who I'm talking about. I'm talking about that sister Sally, the one that always asks you for $5. You know, they address you by your situation. Uh, and they talk about you by your situation. So everybody has been used to this guy. And the Bible said that they, Peter and John, they were just going to the church to pray. And Peter said, and they said, can you give us money? And Peter said, silver or gold, I have not. Look on us, because this is your day of visitation. And he said, rise up! and walk and the Bible said he that was lame begin to move begin to walk and went into the temple with them listen to me brother this guy has been staying out of the temple but he came in there is somebody under the sound of my voice you are about to enter that place where they said you cannot enter oh my god you didn't hear me they said very uh, church listen to me and listen to me carefully they set up a limitation for you. You cannot pass this level financially. You cannot pass this level in your growth. You cannot pass this level. But listen to me. There is coming an anointing of God upon you this morning. It's called a limit breaker anointing. You are going to break the limit. You are going to break the record. Listen to me. It's not yet over. Slap somebody high five and tell them I'm breaking the limit. I'm breaking the limit. I'm breaking the limit. I'm breaking the limit. That devil is a liar. In this year, I will make my million dollar. It's not yet over. I'm breaking the limit. In my family, I'm going to be the head, not the tail. I'm breaking the limit. In my businesses, I'm breaking the limit. In my career, I'm breaking the limit. In my family, I'm breaking the limit. I'm breaking the limit. I'm breaking the limit. I'm breaking the limit. Everybody die in my family based on one disease. But guess what? I'm breaking the limit. I'm breaking the limit. 
Uh, Elijah showed up and said, by this time tomorrow, there shall be another flow. And one thing about God's word is that God's word, it's supernatural in nature. It's supernatural. So, what is supernatural? Supernatural is not what Hollywood have told us. They've been lying to us. No, not, not Hollywood now. Supernatural, it's super plus natural. Let me say it again. Supernatural, it's super married to natural. When super is married to natural, then you have the supernatural. In other words, for there to be a supernatural occurrency, there must be a plus of the natural. In every supernatural, you have a role to play. Tell your neighbor, you have a role to play. Thus said the Lord, by this time tomorrow, there shall be an overflow. It's your turn. It's not yet over. But you have a role to play. I can go shout and scream and dance and jump and run to the high and tell you something's about to happen. But you have a role to play. Let me tell you the role you do not want to play in the supernatural. The first role you do not want to play is the if role. If, I-F. How could this be if God opened the heaven? It cannot happen. Break it down, man. The role of Eve introduce unbelief. The role of Eve introduce fear. And what thing that fear does is that fear paralyzes faith. And now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by faith, the elders obtain a good report. Hebrews 11 verse 6 now says, Without faith, it is impossible to see the supernatural God in the natural way. Without faith, it is impossible to move God. For they that comes to God must believe. Hebrews 11, 6. Must believe. And the moment you introduce fear, fear will cripple your faith. And the moment faith is crippled, faith, you're not going to see no supernatural in the action. Let Pastor Jonathan lay hands on you, lay legs on you, lay body on you, you're not going to see no move of God. Because God is the God of faith. Mark 11 verse 22. Have faith in God. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, shall have whatsoever he says. Faith speaks faith. Let me say it again. Faith. I'm not talking about your neighbor that is faith. I'm not talking about sister faith in the church. Oh, yeah, there's one sister faith in the church. Where is she? Oh, God. I'm not talking about that sister faith. I'm talking about faith that is derived from the 
word of God. From the things that God told you that you cannot even share with your wife. God showed up to Abraham. You go to have your son. He couldn't tell Sarah. When God told Sarah by himself with the angels, Sarah began to laugh. <laughs> Abraham, that angel, I think he was too wrong with the one you gave to him. He's, <laughs> he's speaking rubbish. <laughs> Satan, Sarah began to laugh. Huh? Abraham, can you believe what he said? Me? Carry baby? It's not menos pause. It's men who stop. <laughs> no men who pause. Stop. <laughs> and he's saying, I'm going to have a baby. <laughs> and Sarah began to laugh. Because it does not look like it. And the angel said, don't say the Lord. Because God's word is supernatural in nature. By this time next year, you will be found with your home baby and you will call his name Isaac. I speak to somebody under the sound of my voice this morning. Before 2023 runs out, you are going to laugh with your own Isaac. Oh, you didn't hear what I just said. You're going to laugh with your own Isaac. Your miracles is going to come your way. Your breakthroughs is going to come your way. If you believe that, shout yes. In this season, you need to make a decision. Remember the first thing I said, you cannot play the role of Eve. You cannot be negative in this season. I know it is August, but God said it's not yet over. So you cannot be negative in your behavior. You cannot be negative in the way you speak. Sir. You cannot be negative in the way you look. Even if you don't have money in your pocket, raise up your head. And God said to that short man from Dallas, it is not yet over. I believe it. Believe the Lord that God you shall be established. Believe his prophet then you shall prosper. I believe it. It is not yet over. Things are working for me. Number two things. You need to make a decision. Someone say you need to make a decision. While we sit here till we die, they said to themselves, yes, the world has gone forth. You need to make some action. Your faith needs a corresponding action. That is why James said, without action, faith without works, it's dead. Without corresponding action, your faith in God will not work. Without corresponding action, your faith in God will not work. If you say you believe, then put action to what you believe. I want you to get up tomorrow morning and tell yourself in the mirror, it's not yet over. I'm going to walk to make my abundance. Doors are going to open for me today. Things are going to work for me today. Listen to me, devil. The me that is going to finish 2023 is not the me that started. A better me is going to finish 2023. Better me in my finances. Better me in my emotions. Better me in my job. Better me in my business. Better me in my family. Better me in my church. Better me in relevant church. Better me is going to finish this year. If you believe that, shout yes. Ah, yes. uh, relevant church. Let the devil hear your yes. Say yes. 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 Your faith needs some action. You must make a decision. Let me say this to you. You might not like it. You not making a decision is already a decision. Huh? Bro, you, can I say it in an African way? Yeah. You, not making no decision. It's decision in making. Your life don't tapa. <laughs> <laughs> you, not making decision, 
is you making a decision. You cannot take toll. The Bible said, Abraham do not stagger at the promises of God. Abraham do not stagger. Abraham do not take toll. He said that you are hit or you are out. You remember the way you trade? I know you're a trader. If you pull the truck, it's either you take that trade or you're out of the trade. So you cannot afford to tiptoe in this season, be staggering in the other promises of God. You got to make a decision that I'm going in. I'm going in. I'm going to believe God all the way. I'm going to walk with God all the way. I'm going to do things with God all the way. Let me quickly say this. Five, uh, learn to step out in faith and season. Five, five ways or five things or six ways you need to make a decision. You need to go in all the way. Number one, in your spiritual life. In this season, you need to go in all the way in your spiritual life. Number two, in this season, you need to go all the way in your mental life. Number three, in this season, you need to go all the way in your financial life. In this season, you need to go all the way in your relationship matter. It's either you are for me, Pastor Jonathan, or you're against me. If you're not here with me, then I'm going to kick you out of my life. I do not need people that is going to be Tito Tito party. It's either you are my friend or you're against me. So let me know, are you for me? Yeah. Or are you against me? Don't share the Lord. Some of you in this season, you have to let go of some relationship. Are you still with me? You have to let go of some what? Or some circles. Because if they are either making you or breaking you. The Bible says, he that walk with the wise shall be wise. The company of fool shall be destroyed. <laughs> so if you want to be a millionaire, change your circle. Start moving with some big food that I'm not. Stop hating on other people's wealth. Stop. I don't know what the thing is. Is it because you have all the money? Yes, he does have all the money. Please. Can I, can I know your name? Can I be your friend? Can I have your number? Because when you walk with the wise, you shall be wise. Stop hating. Change your circle. It's either you change your circle, the Bible said, for the pros people, they were sitting at the gate. They said, why we sit here till we die? We need to make a decision. If we go in, okay, it's either we die or we leave. If we stay here, we know we are dead. So let's take a risk. Faith in God we always take the faith risk. Amen. Relevant church, I think I'm done. I, I, but let me, let me. I can't finish it, but I just have to pause. Faith in God. We always take God risk. They said to themselves, we got to step in. The moment they took the sound of faith, the Bible said, remember I told you about the supernatural. Supernatural is what? Super. You must be an A student. I love that sister. She said the supernatural. She must be an A student. <laughs> when you take the natural, then God of the super. We should always step in. Jesus was walking on the water. Peter said, is that you? He said, yes, it's me. He said, if it's you, bid me to come. And Peter stepped out in faith. And he began to walk on the sea. But the moment he left the focus of the supernatural, he began to sink in the natural. 
until you make that decision today, relevant church, to step out in faith in the supernatural, then the God of the supernatural will begin to move everything on your behalf. Time will not permit me, relevant church. The moment they stepped in, the Bible said, God by himself. Go to Second King. Let me show you something here. Go, to, go back. <laughs> See this. <laughs> Verse 6. Verse 6, please. Verse 6. Okay. What does this place say, people? For the Lord... God, because for leprous people, do you know what it means to have leprosy in Israel? In other words, they are the outcast. They are the unqualified. But the unqualified and outcast make a decision in God to step in and God stepped out. Oh. Oh. They, they, listen to me, honey. God is not looking for your degree like a thermometer. God is not looking for your qualification. I don't care how long you've been in church. I don't care whether you speak in the tongue of angels or in the tongue of men. It does not matter in this season. What matters is you telling God, I'm stepping out in faith. Because the moment you step out in faith, the God of the supernatural we step in with you begin to move things on your behalf if you believe that stand up on your feet and begin to thank God because he's moving things on your behalf begin to thank God he's moving nation on my behalf and the Lord of hosts made this host of the Syria to hear a noise of chariots and the noise of horse, even the horses of a great horse. And one of them said to another, Lo, the king of Israel have hired against us the king of Hittite and the king of the Egyptians to come upon us. Let me say this. Your enemies are about to hear some noise that will give them a mist of confusion. <laughs> your enemy. They're about to hear, bless Pastor Jonathan with a million dollars. Two million dollars. <laughs> Let it be according to your faith. True life story. David Young Cho was pastor in the church, largest church in the world then. In Korea. And he was building a church. And there was a millionaire in that town. This guy does not know God. It does not speak in God's language. It does not do anything Bible. But the wife, she's a believer. And David Yogi Cho stepped out in faith. Believing God, we're going to build this church. That people of God are going to come and serve God. And this man got up in the morning, put on a cassette tape. <laughs> a cassette tape there. He put it in the system. And the cassette tape began to play, give David Young Cho one million dollars. The tape began to hear say that. The man said, my wife must be stupid. She must have recorded this. He threw it away. Took another tape, put it there. Give David Young Cho one million dollars. You don't know the God I serve. <laughs> I'm talking about the supernatural. The man said, my wife must be crazy. She thought she and, uh, and a pastor can fool me. The man started driving. True life story. Go and read it. It's in his book, Fourth Dimension. Go ahead. It's there. It's there. And the man was driving to walk. And he stopped. He's, it's just like Africa. You stop people on the road and buy tapes. The man went, bought another tape, opened it by himself, put it in his car, and the radio said, give David Young Cho. One million dollars. Give David Young Cho one million dollars. Give David Young Cho one million dollars. The man got to his office. He called Pastor David. He said, Are you David Young Cho? He said, Yes. I need to see you. I don't like your God. I don't like who you worship. I don't like anything about your God. But take this one million dollars and leave me alone. <laughs> he 
Someone say supernatural. supernatural. Let me tell you this. And I get out of your face. You don't know who I am. I'm a product of the supernatural. My coming to America is a product of supernatural. My mom fight for me. From the backside of Nigeria. Me and my mom, she had me out of wedlock. So I never grew up with her. I grew up with my grandparents. We don't have pictures. We don't have anything. I went to the American embassy. She had to prove that she was my mother. We only had one picture together. One. And in that picture, it was a good picture. And she was far away from me. When I was a baby, one year old. They said, that's not the proof enough. They brought the DNA kit in 20, no, 1999 to Nigeria. We don't have any DNA stuff, so they have to bring it in. Took my saliva, post it back to America. They went to the lab. I never told you this, man of God. They went to the lab. They did the lab. The lab said, she's not my mother. But she's my mom. But that was the time the DNA was not that strong. So the lab could not give them the real stuff. My mother went local. That is my son. Something is wrong somewhere. And I knew. Before I started talking to her, God told me in 1999, he said, son, I'm sending you to America to preach my word of the supernatural to your generation. I knew that God spoke to me. So I knew that there was a delay to my miracle. So I began to pray. I began to fast. I began to tell God, I believe your word. Whatever is happening around me, I bound the bandables and I lose the losables. I move the angels to move on my behalf. I command the atmosphere to begin to change. And I began to pray like never been praying before. Ha, ah, listen to me, honey. If you don't know what to do, pray. One of these days, I will ask your pastor to come and let me teach you the dynamics of prayers. I prayed a lot. I'm a product of prayer. What you see today in my life, in the move of the spirit, is the product of prayer. Things that are happening around me, they are not by accident. It's me forcing things in part of prayer. The Bible said that Zion travailed. She brought forth her children. Oh my God, don't let me go there. So I began to pray. And when I was praying, man of God, I slept off. And I saw in a vision. And God told me in that vision, He said, Son, your visa is ready. Go to Eleka Christian. Go get your visa. I woke up, 4.30 a.m., knocked my grandma's door. I said, Grandma. She said, Hey. I said, I'm going to the embassy. She said, For what? I said, God showed me that my visa is ready. My grandma said, God showed me. And my grandma knows that when I said God showed me, she knows that that's me. She gave me money. That money, I was at the embassy. I, the first gate, you know the way it is. They will first all lock you out. So I was at the first gate. If you can pass the first gate, you are blessed. So, <laughs> so I went with my passport and I got there at the first gate. And I could remember very well. This lady said, She looked at she said, Where's the letter? I said, I have no letter, ma. She said, So what are you here for? I said, They said I should call. Listen to my English. They said I should call. She said, Who said? I said, They said, ma, that I should call. Because I cannot tell a natural man spiritual things. How can I tell her I saw in a vision that God told me to come? She won't understand that. So I said, they said I should come. I said, who? Then she said, did they call you? I said, yes. <laughs> I said, yes. They called me. She, she stopped my passport. She gave me a number. She said, go in. I don't know what's wrong with all these small kids. They won't sit in there. Just go in, stupid boy. I said, yes, ma. <laughs> I took my passport. I sat down. They called my number. And the man said, where's your passport? I gave him my passport at the window. He said, where's the letter? I said, I have no letter, sir. They said I should come. He said, who? I said, they said I should come. come on, I said, who? I said, they said I should come. The guy took my passport. He went back. After two hours, ten minutes, I look at the time. The guy came back, said, come. I said, he said, welcome to America. He said, he said your, your green card has been approved. Long time ago, actually it has been sitting. But thank God you came. He gave me the piece of paper. He said, come back here by 4.30. Come pick your green card. I said, yes, sir. I went back. Out. I called my mama. 
She woke up. I said, Mommy. He said, eh, I said, I have my visa. She said, what? I said, I have my visa. He said, which visa? He said, I didn't tell you to go to the, to the embassy. I said, he told me to go. And I came. She said, okay. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not arguing with you. How does the visa look? I said, I don't know. But they gave me a piece of paper. They said, 430. I should come back and get my visa. She said, okay. When you get it, in the way, call me. Then I will know. And at 4.30, I went back. They gave me this package. I carried it in the, in the plastic bag. And I called her. I said, Mom, I have it. He said, how does it look? I said, this is the way it looks. In the big brown envelope. I said, should I open it? She said, no, 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 don't open it. I said, what? She said, they put my name on it. Oludayo, Paul Bolu. They put your name, Christian Nadebo. She said, son, when are you coming? I said, when do you want me to come? She said, I'm sending money for your visa. Uh, for, your, for your ticket. You are not spending the weekend in Nigeria. Come now. There is, listen, there is a God of the supernatural. And that is the God that you serve. Lift up your hands. Come on, come on. Give God a praise. Give God a praise in this place. Give God a praise in this place. Come on.